Planner launch season is almost upon us. End of August and early September every year have all the planner brands coming out with new things, getting you ready for the start of the next year. So I don't have any of the new stuff in this video today, but I thought I would go over some planner layouts and different planner brands that I have been using to show you guys so you can start to think about what you are looking for in your 2025 planner. So I pulled out a bunch of stuff from the past few years. So some stuff I haven't filled out, some stuff I have filled out. So I just thought I'd show you kind of what the options are. So first, let's just push some things aside. We'll start with Happy Planner because I have so much Happy Planner stuff. Um, and the first thing you need to know as you're thinking about planner layouts is that there are three main sizes. Your big Happy Planner, your classic Happy Planner, and your mini Happy Planner. Now, mini and classic also have the skinny layout. I couldn't find a skinny classic to show you here, but it's the same layout as this, just with nine discs instead of seven. So those are your three planner sizes, and then there are layouts for each one. So let's just take a look at some of the layouts, and I'll tell you about how I've used them in the past. Any of these will work great as just your one planner if that's all you need and you're just keeping track of appointments and tasks and all that kind of stuff. You just have to think about which layout might be best for you personally. Okay, so let's first look at a decorated planner because that's always fun. This was my planner for the last year and it is a vertical layout. So there's always a monthly spread and then the vertical layout has three boxes down the middle. So I just put things everywhere um, and kind of put tasks and to-dos and all that kind of stuff throughout. But I know some people do like AM, PM and tasks or um, home, work and self-care. So you can break it up however you want. And of course, I love to decorate it, but you definitely do not have to. So this is what a vertical layout looks like. There are a couple of different versions of a vertical layout as well. One of them I'm currently using, which is right in here. And it is the lined vertical layout. So it has like a box up at the top and then these lines. So it's really easy to keep things neat and even. And I love it for that. I can keep what's on our task list like right below and then like the biggest thing for the day right there. Um, but yeah, that is a lined vertical layout. There is also looking at these. What is this one? Uh, yes, this is a vertical layout, but it has the times on it. So it's great if you work from an office and have a lot of appointments or meetings or things like that and have to be at places at very specific times. And this one, of course, is undated. So I don't know what's coming out in any of these planner fall releases. This is just stuff that has been out before. So whether or not they have these specific layouts in the fall, I don't know. But I know there are still the 18 month planners that came out earlier this year that will work through all of 2025 for Happy Planner. And there are some of these layouts throughout. All right, another... Um, layout that I love is the dashboard layout and I am currently using that for my social media planning and so this is what it looks like it has a section here that people sometimes use for like meal planning or things like that I use that for my YouTube videos I do posts here but you could do like your daily schedule here and then tasks so this could be like home chores or emails you need to send there's an important category um, let's just show you a blank one. Here's a blank one. Um, looking ahead, notes. It's really great if you need to break out a lot of tasks that don't need to be on specific days. So you can have your schedule and then everything else that you're going to do. So I really like that layout as well. Okay, then another one that I don't think will come out in the fall release, but if you're thinking about planners, you probably want to consider this one as well because it's already out. You can get it now. It's the teacher layout and you do not have to be a teacher to use it. This is the other one I've considered for social media, but it would also be great for home life and things like that because... 
So right now it's only five days here, but a lot of people cover this over and put boxes to have five different categories and then they put seven days of the week up top. And so for social media, for instance, it could be like YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, editing, emails, you know, something like that. Um, but for home life, it could be chores, um, tasks, you know, like non-chore tasks like emails, bank stuff, all of that kid activities, self-care, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I love this layout. It's fun. I just haven't figured out quite how to decorate it. So I haven't really used it much. Um, but I think this planner is gorgeous. Just look at these dividers. So cute. Um, so I'm really considering this one for the next year. And then the last main happy planner layout is the horizontal layout and look this one is so old it's from 2020 to 2021 this is the horizontal and i used to use it as a journal i did kind of bujo type stuff the first month and plopped it in here when i was getting started with it but um it's just you know horizontal they don't do the thick lines in between anymore it's thin lines now um but I used it as a journal. You can totally use it as a planner as well. And if you want to see that in action, um, Kenya, Kenya Doll Plans, she um, has great uh, horizontal layouts that she uses as her everyday planner. So you can get some ideas there, but it's a great layout as well. I used it for journaling until I went into the dot grid notebooks. All right, so then all those layouts are available in the Big Happy Planner too. I only have this Teacher Edition Planner to pull out in the big right now. This is letter-sized paper. So if you want to be able to easily insert things with a planner punch and not have to cut things down and all of that, this is your go-to. This one I don't love just because everything's so colorful on it. I like to be able to decorate things myself. But if you're busy and just going to be writing in it, having something this decorated is great. Um, yeah, so this is a big size. As I said, it has the vertical layout, the hourly layouts, the dashboard layout, like all the things. Okay, the last two little happy planner stuff we'll look at are these. This is the mini and the skinny mini. Now this, I only have my own printables in just as like testing them out. Um, but again, the, you can get horizontal, vertical, or dashboard in this. They don't have all the options since it's just so compact. And then this is the skinny mini and the skinny classic looks the exact same. It's just a little bit bigger. So I have used this for a lot of different things. I first used it for like affirmations and things like that. And that didn't last long and I stopped using it. And recently I just started using it again for my son's um, allergy tracking, lots of food allergies and stuff. So this is how I've been decorating it lately. I mark off when I give him his oral immunotherapy each day, um, mark off appointments and check in on how his rashes are doing. So it's super fun to decorate. It's my favorite one to decorate right now just cause it's so cute. But I'm hoping they come out with more of these. They had like a break from them. And then last year they came out with some more, or this year, 2024. At the beginning of this year was the first ones out again, I think. So they're super fun. All right. Then the other thing you can do with any planner or any notebook is make your own pages. So if you're feeling really craftsy, instead of getting into a planner, you can consider doing kind of bullet journal style stuff. And so here are just some examples of bullet journaling that I was doing for a while. Just as I got into things, I used stickers, I doodled, I did all sorts of stuff, made happy lists, affirmations pages, and used stamps. And it was just a really fun creative outlet. I highly recommend doing that. And I had all sorts of other pages in here from surgeries and just other stuff. It's just a really fun way to add pages to your planner that might not already be in it. And you don't need to do too much drawing. Like this page is all scrapbook paper, washi tape, and stamps. Like, not that hard. 
Um, if you like the idea of this kind of stuff, what you'll need is filler paper or printing stuff and cutting it and punching it. Um, if you don't want to create it yourself, you can do planner printables, which there are lots of people who have planner printables available, including myself. So I'll just show you a few things. This is over a year of planner printables doing all my mood trackers and things like that. So this was the very first one I came out with. And then after this month, I drew some of these things. And then after this month, every single thing in all of these has been hand drawn. So we had a strawberry lemonade theme and sunflower themed. And at first I just did black and white ones. And then later I started adding colorful versions. I just add them in because there's some things that planners don't necessarily offer like mood trackers and step trackers and things like that and having pages for those items. I love my self-care bingo. That's always really fun to do. So there's just a lot. Um, you can make whatever pages that you want for your planner, especially if you have one that you can pop pages in and out. Now I have two other brands that I've been using. One is newer to me and one I've been using for a whole year. Oh my goodness. Okay, so we have the Daily Grind Planner and we have the Laurel Denise Planner. So Laurel Denise is brand new to me. Let's quickly look at that. I was using this as a home planner and allergy tracking. I found I couldn't keep up with the allergy tracking in this, but I think this planner is still super cute. So I kind of want to see what I can do with it. But the cool thing is, as you guys know, I love my Dutch doors in my journals. This has built-in Dutch doors right here, so you can always see your monthly spread. So it's got a monthly spread and then a horizontal. There's also a vertical one. I haven't tried that one out. They also have a mini-sized one that's like yay big, I think, but I haven't tried that one out either. But so you have your monthly your horizontal and then like a to do today and this week column and then habit trackers and this whole blank section and to do this month. So every page is like that. There's no colorful dividers or anything like that. This is purely function. Um, so I don't have many ideas on how to use this since I've only used it for like a month, but um, I think it's definitely something to consider and think about. The only downside for me is that it's got these coils and you can't take out the pages. So for me, as someone who loves to Franken plan and move things around, not having it disc bound is kind of a big deal. <laughs> but if you're gonna be a one planner person or you don't like to Franken plan and you just like to have a couple different planners, this might be a good fit for you. All right, then Daily Grind Planner I have been using for a year and I love it just to start out it is similar to Happy Planner in that it's disc bound. They both fit the same spacing of the discs, but if you'll notice, Happy Planner is only nine discs, Daily Grind is 10 discs, a big Happy Planner is 11 discs. So it is not interchangeable with covers or anything like that. Just as an FYI, <laughs> so you don't uh, try to do that. But like, I love this Lux cover. It is so cute. If you're new to Daily Grind, this one, this like layout of the cover matches the layout of these. As you can see, here's your goals and your check boxes and all of that. So the point of this planner is that you have top 10 goals this month. I posted these down. I printed out my top 10 goals and posted it down, pasted it down. I can't talk, um, but normally it looks like this. I just never filled out the month in review page, whoops. <laughs> um, but you have 10 goals that you focus on for the month. And then you write down those micro movements towards each of your goals. It also has gratitude, like your to-do list, your top three movers, because which of us, none of us reach all of our 10 goals every single day. Um, so picking your top three helps to at least get something towards some of your goals. A game plan section, so this would be like your daily schedule. And then to feel amazing, I use kind of for like self-care. Um, 
but as you can see, I decorated a little bit, but not as much as my happy planner in terms of like stickers. I do a lot of highlighter and things like that. But I have used this consistently for a year and it has been amazing for mainly checking in on all my social media goals as well as all my personal like self-care things that are so easy to push aside as a mom and small business owner. So it's just super fun. They have so many covers and all of that. So they have kind of the way to Franken plan it yourself because it's a four month undated system. And then besides these pages, you have um, other sections you can add in. So this is the reading tracker. It, um, no, it's not. Where's the reading tracker? <laughs> Here's some reading tracker extra pages. So this is a TBR list that I didn't fill out. They have a weekly reading log. Let me show you the other, the current stuff that I'm using. This is my current um, planner for this month. And here's the reading tracker in everything that I have filled out so far. And the TBR list, let's see. I created this A to Z so you can add your own pages just like Happy Planner because, you know, it's all disc bound. And then monthly reading wrap ups with some reviews and things like that. Super fun. They also have budget and habits and all sorts of different um, add ins as well as filler paper just like Happy Planner. So I made this cool Aulani planning Dutch door spread um, to plan out our upcoming vacation. But yeah, this is the Daily Grind Planner. It is great for your daily needs. Oh, I will say Happy Planner does have daily pages as well, but they're just daily pages that you can kind of pull in and out and there's no uh, week in review pages, month ahead pages, all that kind of stuff um, like this has. And I love the focus of this one on goal setting. So for daily pages, I will choose the Daily Grind Planner and for Happy Planner, I'll choose my other layouts. Um, they also just came out with these calendar pages. As you can tell, I didn't figure out what I wanted to use it for for this month, but I am working on figuring this out. Maybe a doodle challenge, maybe one line a day about the day, um, maybe a virtue or item that I want to focus on each day, like patience or kindness or whatever I feel like I need, uh, with the kids that day. <laughs> um, but yeah, lots of choices, lots and lots and lots of choices for your planner for 2025. So I will keep you posted as I hear about all the various planner launches and I'll share new releases with you if I receive them and um, definitely will keep you apprised as best I can. But let me know below what layouts you're looking for for 2025 and how many planners you'll be using. I know the amount of planners I use probably is more than most people want to use, but it works for my brain. So what works for you? All right. Thanks so much for joining me today and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.